Welcome to each of you, especially if you're a guest, we welcome you. We ask everyone please to sign the card in the pew. If you either hand that to us on the way out or put it in the offering plate, greatly appreciate it. Our service for this weekend is our blended service. So everything is projected on the screen for you. Our theme is Children of the Light for the fourth Sunday in or weekend in Lent. But before we get our service, would you do me a favor? If you're, uh, as you're able, would you rise and just uh, turn around and greet each other? 
and offer the peace of the Lord. God's peace be with you. Good to see you. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. Our opening hymn is There is a Redeemer. May God bless our worship tonight. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol Him, all you peoples. For great is His love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Let us take refuge in the mercy of God, confessing our sins, and rejoicing in His forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by our failure to do good and by the evil we have done. We have sinned and cannot free ourselves. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, whose obedient life and life-giving death has redeemed us. Restore us by your Spirit, that we may live holy and righteous lives, worthy of those who bear your name by baptism and faith. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of, of the Word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We pray together the call of the day. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may hardly acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, By His Wounds. By His Wounds we sing. You may be seated. Thank you. 
from Isaiah chapter 42, beginning at the 14th verse. For a long time I've held my peace. I've kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all the vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, You are our gods. Hear you, deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as a servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake to magnify his law, and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our review of the Catechism as we look at the sacrament of the altar. What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. Where is this written? The Holy Evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and St. Paul write, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he's betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, 
Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. From Matthew chapter 26, Jesus said, This is my body, this is my blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. I received from the Lord what also passed on to you. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 27. Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. By one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. By one sacrifice, he is made perfect forever. Those who are being made holy. Our epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. It also serves as our text for tonight's message. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things they, that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise at this time for the reading of our Holy Gospel. The Gospel is according to St. John, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with, his, with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the, in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? 
And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We, now, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether as he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may, may see, and those who may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our creedal hymn, In God We Believe. may be seen and invite any children would like to come forward for a lesson to do so at this time.
How are you doing? Good. Good to be with you and be with each of you in God's house. Uh, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a place where it's really dark? You remember where it was? You ever been in a storm in the house? And uh, maybe there's a lot of lightning and thunder and the lights went out, the electricity went out? What did you do? You went by your parents. How did you know where to go? Okay. Got to in the way. Okay. All right. Well, some things come in handy, don't they? What, uh, what is uh, what's, uh, this here? A candle. You think a candle would have come in handy on that night? Probably. Or maybe something like this might have come in handy. What's this? A flashlight. Yeah, those things help us. When things are dark, it brings things to light. You know what? One of the darkest places I've been besides being in a cave is actually in this church, you know that? At night. If you've ever been here on a really dark night, this church is really dark. In fact, kind of like being in a cave, you can't see barely your hand in front of your face. But you can see one thing. You know what you can see? See that light over there that's kind of reddish, red light? You know what that's called? That's the eternal light or eternal candle. And that stays on all the time. And I've actually, I think I've told you this before, I've done this more than once. From that side of the church, I've walked all the way down looking at that light, following that light. Do you think I was thankful for that light? You bet. Without that, I would have been, well... I would have been in trouble walking into things, and that's not a good thing, right? Well, you know what? The Bible tells us that we were in darkness. In fact, it tells us that we were darkness. You have any idea what that means? We were in, yeah, we were in sin. Now, could we find our way out of that? No. Would this help us? No. Would this help us? Let me show you something else. Would this help us? What is this? The Holy Bible. And what about the Holy Bible does it tell us about darkness and sin and how we're brought into light or we might know about light? It tells us about who? Jesus, yeah. In fact, the good news for you and for me and for all people is Jesus came into this world of darkness. In fact, we were darkness because of our sin. Not just to bring light, but to be the light, right? And he did that through the life that he lived and through the death that he died on the cross to pay for what? All your sin and darkness, once and for all. And then the amazing thing happened on the third day. What happened on the third day? Yeah, he rose from the grave that we might be brought into his life. Now, for you, or for me, it may have been in our baptism. But, you know, for others, it might first be that they hear the message of the Bible and Jesus, right? And then brought into light, he even helps his light to shine out, that others might know him too. And may it be that God might not only keep us in his light, but also help us to share and show that light to everyone. Do me a favor, would you? Would you bow your head and fold your hands? We pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you've come into the darkness of this world to bring life and light. We thank you for your life, for your death on the cross where you paid for our sin, and for your resurrection which we have life and light now and forever. Help us not only to know that light, but to share your love and light with everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming. You can go back to your seats as we sing our sermon hymn.
Grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. I asked in the children's lesson whether you've been, they've been in a really dark place, but let me add on that. Have you ever come out of a really dark room into bright sunlight area? And how was that? It's interesting and saw a couple of people, even uh, with the light and the sunlight, having some sunglasses coming to church today. It is bright out there, isn't it? When that sun shines in. I remember coming uh, uh, from high school when I would go home. I only lived a couple blocks away from the school. And sometimes in the winter time, the school itself was kind of like the school that we have here in high school. Is There are not a lot of windows, so there's not a lot of real light that shines through. And so when you would come out like a day like this, it would almost blind you. And it took a little bit to adjust to the light. But once you did, you could see clearly. You could see where you're going, where to walk. Well, that's kind of how it is as Christians, as people of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. We have come out of the darkness and into the light. And it's the light of Christ that we're walking in and living in. And you know something? That makes a difference for you and for me and for our world. Our text is the epistle to, for today from Ephesians chapter 5. And St. Paul is addressing the question. Now that we are Christians, God's people... How shall we live? What difference does being a Christian, a child of God, make in the way we speak and we act and live? In our text, the darkness, the contrast is between darkness and light. And he tells us very clearly, God's word, you were darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Indeed, we start with darkness. And like the rest of mankind, the world, we were in darkness. In fact, Paul says it even more strongly. We were darkness. Not just we're in darkness, 
but we were darkness. Darkness was our very nature. Our fallen, sinful nature, corrupted in our original sin, lacking the true knowledge and fear of God. That is who we were. Darkness. And that is how the world is. The values of the world, which is aligned against God and His ways. Paul puts it this way. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Once upon a time you and I weren't aware of our sin. Once upon a time we were oblivious, oblivious to God's desires. And now those days are gone for those who are in Christ. We can see our sin. We know our sin. We know when we've sinned. But that's not the end of it, thanks be to God. We can also see that we have forgiveness in Jesus and we're forgiven. And now you know what is well-pleasing to Him. But the devil wants us to stay in darkness and walk in darkness and to embrace the way we once were, just like he was tempting the people in Ephesus in that day. Christ, though, enables us to walk in light, and he walks with you. Thanks be to God. We're not going at it alone, are we? He enables us to walk in the light, and he walks with you as he is perfect goodness and righteousness and the truth that Paul talks about. His death and resurrection has changed you and me. And He has done it all. And now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, He enables us to demonstrate the fruit of light in the way that we live, in the way we act and speak. To be the light means that our walk in this life is different. If you live in the dark, you stumble and fall, don't you? Imagine for a minute what it would be like to be blind in a new city. Or how about being that blind man in the gospel who was born blind from birth? To be in a place you don't know and not have a cane or someone to guide you or a dog or anything. It would be pretty scary and terrifying. A terrible experience. But when you can see... When you walk in the light, you're going to be safe. That is what Paul says. Walk as children of the light and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness. We as God's people need to remember that there is no Christian twilight where dark and light coexist. We can't walk in light and dark at the same time. We walk only as children of light as we seek what is good and right and true by God's power. In fact, of ourselves, we can't do it. But through the Holy Spirit, as He leads us to God's Word, we are able to discern what, how God wants us to live. We no longer embrace the activities of the dark. Rather, His light exposes them for what they are and that they lead to death and destruction. That's why Paul warns us about going back into the darkness, about getting matched up again with and influenced by the sons of disobedience, the world. He warns us against taking part in what he calls the unfruitful works of darkness. Because of these things, he says, the wrath of God is coming. But as people of God, this is not who we are anymore. St. Paul writes, Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The fruit of the light is found in everything that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to God. You see now. Now you can see everything now in new light, in His light. Now we are in the light, and more than that, now we are His light. Now you are the light in the Lord, Paul says. Therefore walk as children of the light. The Bible tells us the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. It never will. 
The light of Christ shone in the darkness on that Good Friday, didn't it? When darkness covered the land. During the hours when our Lord was hanging on the cross for us and for all people. In that darkness, God's own Son was taking the judgment and wrath of God that all of us deserved. And He suffered it in our place once for all. The Savior of mankind, our Savior Jesus Christ, took all of our sins, all of our death, and He died to take them off of you and me. And thanks be to God, it worked. He's victorious. He arose on Easter morning, and a new day has dawned for all who trust in Him, for us and for all of His people. His light of life disperses our darkness. In holy baptism, you were brought into that light. It became ours, and we are His. Because there we are joined with Jesus, connected to Him. And there we are lightened. We're brought into that light. And the Holy Spirit enlightens our minds and our souls with new light. We are awakened in Him. And now once we've been awakened, once we start walking, walking is the Bible's way of saying how we live, how we conduct our life in a consistent manner. And Paul tells us here, walk as children of light. We have light within us. He abides in us. And we are his light now, being connected to the Lord through the word and the sacrament. Therefore, walk in the light Conduct your life now in a manner fitting as children of the light. Man, not only do we need his light, but the world in which we live needs his light and love to shine through to everyone. We've been awakened and we are walking and we're called to be wise. Wisdom is knowledge applied, it's sound judgment, it's right decision making. To be wise means to ponder questions like, what is the will of God? And seek Him through His Word and prayer. How would He have me live? What goes with being a Christian? Certainly, of course, the Ten Commandments gives us broad strokes what to do and not to do. But the power to live that way doesn't come from the law. It comes from the good news of Jesus. That's the power and through His Word and Spirit. The shape of that new life will always come to the will of God, expressed in the commandments, but lived out by the power of the Holy Spirit and the good news of Jesus. May we walk in it, walking in the light as His children. We can see His path and walk in it, what it looks like. And His Word enables us and warns us from veering off from course. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you through the Word that you read and you hear proclaimed and taught. As a Christian, we can tell the difference between darkness and light when we are guided by Him through His Word. We show His light not to display how wonderful we are, but to show how wonderful our Savior is our God is. As St. Peter writes in his epistle, shine your light so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what we're empowered to do and be. And may God grant us his grace to always shine his light that he's given us and stay in his light. You know, there's one more thing about it. May we never forget in that light. There's joy and peace in Him. Eternal. There's a joy in walking as children of light and shining it forth. When you think of all that God has done for you and for me, delivering us out of darkness and bringing us into the kingdom of light, what makes our spirit sing? And so we hear the joyful note of Scripture that tells us, Be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, 
giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let that light might shine to all. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ our risen Lord. Amen. At this time, as you're able, we rise as we sing our offertory hymn, and the offering is brought forth. We sing, Give Thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church of God, that she, enlightened by the gospel, would be a home for those cast out by this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who seek refuge in the church of Christ, that God would raise up pastors and church workers in every age to serve them in his name and proclaim him, you, as Lord of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those baptized into the light of Christ, that you, O Lord, would guide us in your ways and teach us to both know your will and do your will, that your light and love might be shown to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who wander in the darkness through rough places in this life, that they would wait on the salvation of the Lord and not be put to shame. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those afflicted in body and soul and those in need, especially, O Lord, we remember those who continue to recover from earthquakes and hurricanes and other tragedies, as well as Ukraine and Russia and Iran and other areas of persecution and trial. We further remember Shirley Craker, Pastor John Sugatan, Ion Harms, Thomas, Carl Cook, Ken Rosensky, Jake Humor, Crystal Olnick, Sherry Neely, Karen Johnson, Jan, and those we name in our hearts. We also pray, O oh Lord, that you might grant comfort to those who mourn the death of loved ones. We especially remember the family of Kevin Swanson and the family of Josh Kelsey and all who mourn, that they may know your presence and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh, Holy Spirit, we pray that you continue to guide us in our calling of a DCE. We pray that you might provide the person that you've chosen. Guide us that we may clearly know your will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priest who is God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amazing Love.
Once again, good evening. Welcome to each of you, especially if you're a guest, we welcome you. Please come and join us again anytime for worship at St. Peter's. Uh, just an announcement, a reminder, tomorrow we'll have again Bible study and Sunday school and our midweek Advent services coming up. And I hope you have a very blessed uh, evening and week ahead for him. The Lord be with you.